My name is Charles Elson. I'm a clinical professor in the Department of Psychiatry and I'm appointed as a physician educator in the Division of Preventive Medicine, Department of Medicine at the University of Alberta. This session focuses on the issue of workplace drug testing. Thank you to the Workers' Compensation Board of Alberta for making funding available for this project. There are no conflicts of interest to declare and the opinions expressed in this presentation reflect those of myself and certainly not those of any collaborator or funding agency. This session focuses on a brief overview of workplace drug testing and at the end of this session uh, participants will be equipped to list the context in which workplace drug testing occurs, describe the utility of different tests and finally explain the current limitations in testing. So humans have been consuming psychoactive substances since prehistoric times and it's likely going to continue for as long as humankind exists. The use of alcohol and drugs and on and off the job has been shown to impact the workplace in many ways. Some of the issues where impact is especially relevant is that of individual worker health, safety, absenteeism, workplace safety and security as well as the impact on productivity and revenue. Over time, society and employers have become more aware of the risk of harm associated with alcohol and drug use. And today, at least as it pertains to safety-sensitive workplaces, there's an almost universal proscription on consumption of alcohol and drugs, not counting tobacco and nicotine during work or within close proximity of starting the work shift. A comprehensive approach to substance use or substance use disorders in the workplace should include assisting in detection, deterrence, the identification of related issues, and it should send a clear message that alcohol and drug use in the workplace is prohibited. Further, it encourages employees who have problems with alcohol and other drugs to voluntarily seek help for these bona fide disabilities. A comprehensive approach to a drug-free workplace includes a variety of components, that being a written policy, employee education and supervisor training, drug testing, employee assistance programs, as well as ensuring compliance with the duty to accommodate to the point of undue hardship. Clinically, the use of a random drug test is useful to identify drug use in people with substance use disorders for the purposes of prevention, intervention, monitoring, uh, after these conditions have been diagnosed. And the new frontier for drug testing has become the workplace. In the workplace, where drug testing can occur in a variety of contexts, namely the following, pre-employment or pre-access, where it's a condition of assignment to work at a particular site, and oftentimes the employer may require a negative result before the employee can access the site. Then there is a reasonable cause and post-incident testing for both alcohol and drugs and where it's justified but must be part of a larger drug assessment program. Another context for testing is the so-called post-treatment testing and this is aligned with a clinical application whereby an evidence-based treatment modality or substance abuse or substance relapse prevention plan uh, is initiated by assessing or by an assessment and treatment healthcare professional. Finally, at the edge of this new frontier is a random testing, and that is truly random, unannounced drug testing, where there's no evidence of occupational risk or any evidence of occupational impairment. Given that drug testing does not measure current impairment, the question arises whether random, unannounced alcohol and drug testing could be considered justifiable and reasonable in a work environment. The utility of reasonable cause and post-incident testing for both alcohol and drugs is well established and generally not considered controversial. In Canada, the issue of random testing has become the focus of intense debate and evolving jurisprudence. The final chapter on whether it reduces workplace accidents has not been written, and this is the focus of ongoing research investigation. To date, research indicates that workplace drug testing is most likely a deterrent in more dependent or very frequent drug users. Cost effectiveness of such testing has been poorly studied and the impact of a random unannounced drug and alcohol testing uh, on workplace safety, productivity, drug control, uh, the well-being of employees appear to be insufficiently explored at this time to allow for definitive conclusions. 
and certainly these are topics of ongoing research and debate. The final answer will likely be found in studies that adopt the appropriate methodologies like randomized controlled trials, cluster randomized trials, interrupted time series studies, and controlled before and after studies. The issue of whether random unannounced testing will be allowed under human rights will likely be determined in the Supreme Court of Canada. In conclusion, can the random alcohol and drug unannounced testing indeed be a useful tool to ensure employee health and safety? And what's the evidence to suggest that it does actually translate into diminished occupational risk? Based on the existing body of evidence, which is evolving, there may currently be insufficient high quality evidence to advise for or against the use of such testing to prevent injuries. It's a field that's rapidly changing and evolving. Based on current evidence, framing drug and alcohol testing as a sole effective long-term solution to the issue of drugs and alcohol and its effect in the workplace is at best tenuous and at worst seriously flawed. Workplace drug testing has its utility in a number of contexts, for example, post-incident, post-treatment. Random unannounced alcohol and drug testing has been insufficiently explored to allow for definitive policy decisions at this time. More research is underway, utilizing the appropriate methodologies. Drug testing does not measure impairment and the utility of post-accident, post-treatment monitoring is well established under human rights frameworks. We've included a list of resources which may be helpful. Thank you. We look forward to your feedback and comments and please help us identify further topics for future discussion. Thank you.